Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be talking about perhaps one of the most requested videos in the design system uh, playlist that I'm doing, which is creating the button component. So <clears throat> how do you go about creating a button component? Well, the first thing that you actually need to do is you need to create a base button. And we're creating this base button because we want to have a single place where we can go and we can make updates that will be applied to all of the, let's say, variants in that particular size. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to first of all give this a heading. So let's just give it a heading minus two. That should be fine. And now let's just go ahead and create our button. So I'm just going to say this is going to be our button. Let, let me just make <clears throat> this text smaller. So since we're actually going to get started with the base button, I'll just say this is going to be our button or maybe a button title. Uh, we're going to give an auto layout outside of it. We're going to give it our primary color that we have. And let's just make the text white. I'm also going to give this a border radius. I also am going to give this a height. So one important thing to note, I'm giving it a height and I want the base button to be or the base medium sized button to be for 40 pixels. So I've given it 40 pixels, but I want the padding on the left and right to be, let's say, 16 pixels. And I think that looks fine. The only problem is since the padding at the top is 16 and the padding on the bottom is 16 as well. But since it's not getting enough space, it's obviously misaligning it. So what we just need to do is we need to just center it. We can also remove the padding from the top and the bottom now that we basically have it centered. But I like to give it both the all around four of four all around the four directions is because once we have this particular thing fixed, right, it doesn't matter what the top and bottom is if we basically centered it. And since I've centered it, like I can get a visual representation of what the alignment or sorry, what the padding around the element is. So I don't have to remove it. Now I'm going to include the icon. I'm going to say we need a left icon here. So I'm going to include the left icon there. I'm going to say the fonts, the size for this is going to be 16. And then this particular thing can actually be right when I can see the icon here. So here we have the right and I'm just going to say this is going to be white. So here we have our base button for the medium size created. I'm going to basically create, make this a component. I'm going to say underscore base minus button slash medium since it's the medium size. And the reason why I've given this underscore base minus medium is anytime you basically create a component and you append it with underscore, once you publish a library, that particular component would not be published. It would not be visible when you've published this library. And we don't want this base button to be visible outside of the library, which is why I've given it uh, the underscore. Now I'm gonna just gonna go ahead and click the plus button for the variants. Now we basically wanna create a variant for let's say the small version and the large version. So I'm just gonna say small, large. So this is the small one. <clears throat> one thing I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna apply the auto layout on this base button component itself and the reason for that is just for visual purposes because I just want all of these buttons to be aligned on uh, horizontally and I want some spacing in between them maybe 40 and that's the only reason why I have done it it does not have any impact on the button uh, or the base button component itself or the larger button for that matter so now I'm going to go ahead I'm going to say now that we have created the base variant we want to create a small variant as well i'm going to say this is going to be 12 pixels now all of these uh, these particular button sizes are also going to be slightly smaller in size maybe 14 that makes sense and the padding all around them can also be reduced to maybe 12. the height can also be reduced now and the height can be 32. so now we have this small variant created as well what i can do or also again that's really important i want to reduce the spacing in between elements here this can be 18. this can probably be 10. However, as I've already established, we probably in, I'm just going to go to my grid system. So we have 2, 4, 8, 12, 16. So I would prefer not to give it 10. We can in this particular case, if we want to, because I want, let's say 12 pixel spacing here in between the elements. And let's just go ahead and give this a large semi bold size, change the uh, icon size to maybe let's say 20, see how that looks um maybe this looks a bit large let's just go ahead and give it 18 i think this looks fine and now i have 12 here and i think the spacing here looks fine and now imagine if i were to give 12 here that would be a bit too much so i'm just going to keep it at 10 and i'm going to allow it i can also go ahead and add that in my design system i'm going to say that we're going to have the 10 pixel size as well as a variation here and i'm just going to increase that 
So now we have our base button created. I obviously want to go ahead and increase this height. So I'm going to make it 48. So, so now we have 32, 40 and 48. So we have these base buttons created and that looks good. Now we want to go ahead and create the actual button component. So this is going to be our button component or the main button component, whatever you want to call it. And I'm basically just going to grab my medium sized button here. I'm going to paste it here and I'm going to basically apply an auto layout on top of it. Now I can give this a button slash <clears throat> primary no, button slash medium slash primary. So now we have a button component created. I'm going to click the plus icon and I'm going to say the yeah. So I'm going to say that we need another property. I forgot to give it a state property. So I'm going to say we have this particular thing is going to be sorry size. This one will be the type of button and this will be the state of the button. So by default, it's going to be default and then we can go ahead and start adding these things. So this is default and this can be hover and we can have an active vari variant for it and then we can have a disabled one for it, disabled. So we have these four states for the buttons. I'm just going to go ahead and say this is going to be P400. This is going to be P500 for the active state. And for the disabled state, what we want to do is we just want to go ahead and change the background to some neutral shade of gray maybe let's say 40 or maybe slightly larger slightly darker uh, maybe 50 makes sense so now we have this main button created or this component created now you want to create some other other types of these buttons as well but before we actually go and define the types we also should go ahead and define the different sizes that we just talked about so we have already have the medium sized button created why don't we just go ahead and duplicate these so I'm just going to duplicate it once and I am then going to duplicate it again. Well, even now that I've duplicated it and I have it selected, I'm going to say this is going to be maybe small. Uh, or we can say that this previous one is going to be small. The middle one can be uh, medium and then I'm just going to duplicate it at the bottom again and I'm going to say this is going to be large. So we have small, medium, large. And now if let's say you wanted to change all of the small variations. Now, one important thing that I want, would like you to notice is now that I have these small variations selected, I intentionally move them at the bottom. So I just want to contain them or I can move them at the top. It doesn't matter, but I just want all of the different sizes contained in a separate space on the left hand side. So now that I have the small particular button selected, I'm going to press enter to select the child. And I'm going to say this medium is going to turn to small. And as you can see, I didn't do anything. And now we have the small variation created. Similarly, I'm going to go here. I'm actually going to, as I mentioned, move this at the bottom. And I'm going to say we have the, uh, this is the large size. So I'm just going to press enter. And I'm going to say this is going to be large. So now we have the large created. And I just want to go ahead and change this to capital medium. This already is large and this already is small. So this looks good. So now we have our primary button created, which has a particular size, right? Has all the three sizes that we talked about. Now, if I wanted to create, let's say some of the other variations, I can say, I wanna go ahead and create maybe a success button. So I'm just gonna say, this is gonna be our success button. And then I also wanna create like maybe a danger button or something, right? So I'm gonna say danger. And in all of these buttons, what I basically have to do now is I have to basically select these. And I'm gonna say for the danger button, I wanna have uh, red 300 or danger 300 so I'm going to say this p300 is going to be replaced by danger 300 so I'm just going to select that and this p400 will be replaced by danger 400 so I'm going to do that so now I have these buttons created and as you can see there is some problem here just a slight problem and the problem here is that I actually forgot to give this a p500 color so this actually should be p500 so we have a different color here so now we have P400, 500, 400, 500, and I had to do the same here. I just forgot to do it. So I'm going to basically select these active states and I'm going to say instead of D400, this active state is going to have a slightly darker color. So now we have our uh, danger color created and I'm basically just going to go ahead. And now if I want, like just in case if I want, I can basically remove this and this is going to be our success variant. One thing that I want to do obviously is basically select all of these buttons and by default just move them at the bottom. So we have let's say the primary buttons first, then we have the danger buttons and then we can have our success buttons. I'm going to move these again and I'm going to say the type is going to be success 
and for the success 300 we're just going to say that the success 300 will be replaced by s 300 here and the s 400 d 400 will be replaced by s 400 for the success and then similarly here for the uh, s 500 we are going to say s 500 and that would be replaced by that so now we have our success button created as well and i'm just going to keep the disabled style the same for all of the buttons because i personally don't think that that's important uh, like keeping these the disabled state for all, all of these buttons different so i'm just going to do that one other minor change that i want to do on these particular buttons is say that the <clears throat> well maybe maybe it's fine never mind okay so now i also want to go ahead and create a secondary button right and for the secondary button what i'm actually going to do is i actually am let just let me go here select all of the success buttons I think all of them are selected now. So now I'm basically just going to go ahead and drag it here. So this is our success variant. I'm going to say success type. I'm going to say this is going to be our secondary type. And for the secondary color, instead of obviously choosing the secondary color that we have here, I'm actually going to give this the same color as the primary, but actually apply a stroke around it. And since we are doing that, we can actually go ahead and delete these styles because we just want to work on one and then duplicate it next. So now I'm going to press enter. I'm going to go ahead and say that the background can actually be white in this case. Even before that, I'm just going to say <clears throat> the text in this case can actually be P300. The background can be white. So I'm just going to make this white and the stroke can actually be P300. So I want this particular style to be applied on this button. So I think that probably looks good. And I'm going to go ahead and apply the a similar style to this one that this one at the bottom so one thing i can do is i can just go and select the base button and i can say i want to copy the properties and i can go and say copy properties i want to go ahead on the base button here and i want to say paste properties and now as you can see basically the styles that we did apply are now applied here i just want to go ahead and make the text color p300 so that looks fine, but obviously in the hover case, we want some difference here. So in the, for the difference, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically say that the background instead of let's say white can actually be P50. And similarly, I can go here, I can actually just go ahead and duplicate this button and I can say this particular button is gonna be the active state. And in this active state, maybe I can do something separate. I can either obviously give this P75, but I think that doesn't look really nice. So I'm just gonna give this a two pixel stroke or a border in this case and as mentioned i think the disabled state can actually be the same for most of the buttons here i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to duplicate these i'm going to say the size in this case is going to be medium i'm going to press enter and i'm going to just change this to medium similarly i'm going to duplicate it again and here i'm going to say these are going to be sorry i actually accidentally uh, grabbed the base buttons which obviously i don't have to do i have to grab the main component I have to drag it here i have to change this to large and then change press enter and then change this base button variation to <clears throat> large so now we have our structure created i can just go ahead now and actually show you what the button component looks like now as you can see we have the different sizes medium small large primary danger success secondary and then default hover active disabled one thing that i obviously want to change in this button component is say that the small is going to be at the beginning the primary is going to be first secondary is going to be second success is going to be third and then danger and then default over active disabled i think that already looks good so one other thing that you can also do is if you want is actually type the properties here or sorry some some of the properties here so i'm going to say that this is going to be our primary button and let's just go ahead and make this font a bit smaller so this is our primary button this one is our secondary button similarly here this is going to be our tertiary sorry not tertiary success then we have the danger button so i think that probably looks fine and now i'm actually just going to go ahead and <clears throat> actually move everything here so first of all what i want to do is i want to grab this whole button component i want to grab these all of these things basically and just move them slightly probably just slightly like this 
And now what we can also do is we can identify the states. We can say this is, this is the active, sorry, default state. This is the active state, sorry, hover state, hover. And let me just make this an auto layout. So this is gonna be our active state and then this is the disabled state. And let me just go ahead and actually reduce the font size for these as well. I'm going to say this is just going to be something like this. And now we can go ahead and obviously increase the spacing here to match what we have there. So here we have this. Then for this, we have similarly this and then this. So hopefully this should clarify what we're looking for. I don't think we actually have to repeat this. I think if we just do it for one, it would be clear. So here we have our basic base button and we can just go ahead and align these things. I'm just going to give this an auto layout, align it. And I think now we have our button component created. One other thing that we can do is we can basically hide the icons by default. I'm just going to go ahead and hide these icons. And sometimes, just sometimes you actually need, let's say the icons appearing on let's say maybe the default state i'm gonna i'm not gonna go ahead and add icons for all of these states i'm, I'm gonna basically go ahead and duplicate these three items i'm gonna sorry okay, let me just expand this a bit so i have more space to work with so i'm just gonna go ahead i'm gonna copy this particular variant i'm gonna paste it here and let me just go ahead and expand this as well slightly <clears throat> So now we have this particular variant here. So this is a small variant. And as you can see, there's a conflict because I'm basically reusing the same property. I can add one more property and I can say icon. So now we can have the icon none in this case, obviously, sorry. We can have the icon none in the default case. So I'm gonna say by default, the icons wouldn't be visible, but in let's say some cases, for example, in this case, in this case, and in this case we want the icons to be visible so now i can select <clears throat> all of these and i can say this is icon left so i can say the left icon would be visible and similarly i can say in this case the right icon would be visible so left icon right icon so now that we have that done i'm just going to go ahead and i'm going to enable the left icon so one thing i also want to do here i want to go ahead and rename these icons so since this particular icon is on the right, I'm going to say this is going to be icon right. In this particular case, I can say this is going to be icon left. So just, just so it's representative, representative when we're actually changing it here. So I'm just going to press enter here, enter again. Now we have all of these icons. I'm basically going to enable the left icon, sorry, in this case. So we have the left icon enabled here. Similarly here, we're going to go ahead and press enter select all of the children i'm going to say in this case the icon right should be visible and then similarly here i can write and here i can write so now we have this particular button with icon left and icon right enabled as well we also want to do it for some of the other variants now what i'm going to do here i'm just going to speed things up so you don't have to see me just going ahead and doing that for all of the buttons that i've created because obviously it's going to take some time and it's just repetitive work So now we basically have this whole thing created. And now as you can see, if I go here, we have the size, the size can be small, medium, whatever. The icon can be none or the icon can be left or right or whatever we want. We can, we can have the hover state, we can have the active state. Obviously the icons aren't really gonna be there on some of the other states. If we want, like I don't think we need to create so many variants. If we want, we can obviously go ahead and enable the icons from here as well just by going inside of the layers, but I've still provided, I think, enough controls for us to go through the design and basically handle most of these things out. I think that's it. Like again, do like the video, do subscribe, do hit the bell icon. And if there are any questions, any concerns, definitely hit me up in the comments. I'll see you later. Take care.